Okay, so uh, this animation is very classical animation. I done it 2001, but don't be afraid. Some of the thing I compute is done by the computer. I mean, almost all the drawing I done manually. Uh, sound design is by Boan Gagic, my colleague who done the performance with me, and the storyboard and the idea of the of the animation is to also to show the experience of the people who. Uh, was participating in our performance. So all these stories, the vision of the people who lay down. Well, now let me go to something completely different. Here you can see the Padar sculpture, Tibetan Padar sculpture. Problem with the electricity in India. I shot this photo in Varanasi, just to understand that we are completely going to some other layer. The mountain the beginning of Himalaya range, where I done my research. So 2011, the same year, I came for one art project to Meklo Ganj. So Meklo Ganj is the place where the Tibetan refugees live, and His Holiness Baila Lama also. And uh, we done the art project for Austrian and Croatian artists. Again, thanks to Virt Institute, so I collaborate a lot with uh, Middle Europe artists. So when I was there, at that time, it was 2011, I started my PhD study, and I wanted to do more research, let's say, on the Balkan ethnography. So, of the old Slavic religion and uh, the Balkan eth ethnography and about the contemporary art. But then one day, we visited the Tanka Peti School. Uh, it's again, Varanasi, this is the Sarnat, the first stupa. So, I will not go so far. I mean, this is the place where Buddha gave his first teaching. And this is one of the <coughs> famous stupa by... King Ashoka. This, uh, this photo I took in Bodhgaya, the place where Buddha get illuminated. And there was a festival of Tibetan Nigma, a branch of Tibetan Buddhism. One of my informer, the professor in uh, Sarnath, and he's uh, running the Sakaya philosophy department in uh, Central University of Tibetan Studies in, uh, in uh, Tashi Tsering in, uh, in Sarnath. So let me go back. This happened after. So 2011, we visited the school run by Master Locho. That's his name. So he's a Tanka master. And his wife, she's, her name is Sarika Singh. She's India from the caste of untouchable. But her grandfather uh, convert uh, to Buddhism. You know that in India, the conversion of the caste of the Untouchable are not the caste because they are not allowed. Us. If they are Hindu, they are not allowed to enter the temple. So the big revival, the big uh, conversion of, uh, uh, into the Buddhism of Untouchable was with Dr. Antekar or Baba Sheba, how they call him. He was anthropologist, and uh, for some uh, of the Buddhists, they believe that he was the incarnation of Avalokiteshvara or the Buddha of Confession. So. Because of Baba, Baba Sheba or Dr. Antekar, a lot of untouchable convert to Buddhism. So his wife Sarika Singh was the first non-Tibetan person and first woman who studied Tibetan Tanka painting. They study, she studied in, uh, because Dala, His Holiness Dalai Lama recommend her, and she studied in Orbulinka Institute where he was a professor. What is the Oberlinka Institute is the institute which preserve the Tibetan culture. In India, as you know, all the institutions are mainly in India because of the thing produced by Mao Zedong, Chinese, uh, the culture uh, revolution where a lot of monastery was destroyed. But the tradition continued in India. So I visited uh, Master Locho and I visited this school as a part of this art project. And what I was shocked, I was surprised, uh, now I go to the first image of Buddha, that they are using, when they are producing the sketches, uh, they are using Pythagora geometry. They are using the golden section. As you know, golden section like a concept, we can, let's say, we can connect it to Pythagora school. Also, it's a rena Renaissance idea. Uh, Luca Piccioli uh, called this measure La Divine Proporzione. So why La Divine Proporzione is important? Again, it's Aristotelian concept. It's the number. So image, it's made by the number. And this holy number exists everywhere. It exists in the nature. It exists in the architecture. So I found out that 
the Tibetan painter now, still work with this geometry, still work with this number. Why they work with this? Why? Because there is, there is a very simple answer. There is, we can follow the mythological story about the uh, first image of Buddha, but the first Buddhist art was produced in Gandhara Kingdom and was the result of Hellenism of uh, Alexander the Great, because Alexander the Great established this, this kingdom, and the first Buddhist art was Hellenistic. And because of this tradition, and because of this connection, idea, this idea of the number survived till now. So when I discovered this, I decided to go to this school, to research it, and this was, uh, uh, this was important for my PhD. I will tell you now. OK, I will not give a lecture. So this, this you see. This is how they start. They repeat the head of the Buddha many times, and this is the, the measure. You have to follow the measure. This is what you do you, when you start your painting. You do the middle. And this is, again, some of the measure of the Shakyamuni Buddha. Huh? OK, this is uh, Shakyamuni Buddha, and you have a green tara here. So, I passed this school, and the, the importance of this school, the name of the, uh, the school is Tang de Gatsal, which means Harmonious Garden. Why it's important? Because this school gave opportunity to Western people to witness the uh, Tibetan Tanka tradition and to try, let's say, to try to, to, to understand the process and to, to try the Tanka painting. Why? Because in the classic uh, uh, Tanka school, like in the, in the Norbolin Institute, you need minimum 10 years. And then there is a layer, normally. After 10 years, you have to be assistant. And then finally, last status is a master. Master is like initiation. What is the master? Master is the person who knows all this measure by heart. So when I was drawing, drawing Buddha, I had to do it with a measurement, copying all the time. But master, he know he's like a shaman. He know all the measure by heart. So uh, let me explain shortly why this was important for my thesis about the space. According to the some lama, some professor from the Sarnat, uh, from the Central University of Tibetan Studies, and according to all my informant, and according to my own experience, because I was doing my anthropological diary, uh, the concept is uh, when you the, the, the technique of painting is completely different than everything which you learn in a so-called West Academy, because all West Academy was based on the Renaissance School and later Paris Academy. So where you uh, create, again, the representation of the space or representation of the, of the person trying to do much more uh, real. Not, so it's not symbolic, it's the representation. Uh, in system of Tanka painting, you are dealing with an endless repeat. You repeat drawing of Buddha head. You repeat the sketches. When you paint, you paint only, uh, only a few sections uh, in West paint. You modulate, uh, modulate color. color. You, do, you mix two color. All other things are produced by the tiny spot or a tiny line. This technique they call dry shading. It's very slow. It's endless. And what is this? When you do this million and billion lines, so everything here is a line, normally you, you enter, you reach altered state of consciousness. You are in a, some kind of meditation. Religious Tibetan, the real painter, they do normally a special mantra to the deity they are painting. And through this, you communicate normally with the deity or Buddha or Bodhisattva you represent in the painting. Why this is important? Finally. When the tanka painting is uh, finished, there is a special ritual, the ritual of the opening of the eyes, which can be only done by the master or by the lama in the temple. Lama in the temple just, he take a needle and he uh, make a perforation in the painting on the eyes. And uh, the painter, he just paint the eyes and he uh, uh, repeating a special mantra for this ritual, for opening of the eyes. Uh, when this is finished, painting is finished and he write the the mantra of, of the deity or bodhisattva or the Buddha on the back side of the painting. And painting uh, is going to the, the temple, and the lama, is, lama can bless the, the painting. Uh, after this, first you cannot order, now you can buy tanka. You know that after uh, 1959, when, when uh, Tibetan immigrated to uh, 
to India and then uh, Tibetan Buddhism uh, spread to the Western world. We have Danka painting in everything which is Tibetan. It's very popular. It's also part of the society spectacle. But this was also planned. Um, but I will not go so far to, to explain this. So Danka painting is placed in the temple and then it's delivered to somebody. So it can be a person who ordered a Tanka painting for uh, for his baby, for if he's ill, or it's going to the temple. How this painting is used? Somebody is praying or meditate near this painting, and he meditate on a Buddha or a Bodhisattva or a deity, which is represented in the painting. And now this was in the most important moment in their, my research. They believe that this painting, this figure, is not the channel. Let me go back to Econo Fighters. Econo Fighter, which in the West improved, this is the channel how we communicate with the divine quality, with the same quality. For them, it's not the channel. It's real. So this Bodhisattva or Buddha, whatever, however you like, embodied, he embodied the, 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 this, uh, that he embodied the painting, and he's real. He's in the painting. And all space change. The same is with the mandala. Normally, mandala can be done by the sand, and there is a painting mandala. So this change. And you are not anymore in the real space. You are in the house of the deity, in the house of the god. Because the main, the center of mandala, center of mandala represents the house of the god, the palace, Shambhala, however you like, kingdom. OK? <clears throat> So some concept of the drawing, how they draw the clouds. And normally, uh, the concept of the freedom, which we have in the West, like artistic freedom, doesn't exist. Again, uh, let me go back to Bryson. Everything is cultural. So for them, freedom of expression is to create a different form of the clouds. But again, according to Buddhist tradition, every cloud, this is the arm of the clouds. This is the head. This is the eyes. So there is a rule, but you can produce, let's say, 10 clouds, or you can produce five, and this is your freedom. So you see it's completely different, and it's a cultural concept. OK? Some of the tankas. And so for me, for my research, this concept of the divine energy Divine energy. We can say that. We can say Buddha, Bodhisattva, but for me it's a divine energy which are coming to the space and produce a third space. The same like Olaf Aurelius. And this was the base of my thesis. And the base of my thesis was that this is not a folk art. This is not the, we cannot observe this saying, okay, this is for ethnographer. Uh, Tibetan painting is conservative because it's, it's frozen in one style and they're dealing with this. No. This colonial, colonialistic approach we have to completely forgive and watch the thing with another eyes. So, uh, okay, this is some mantra near the Dalai Lama, His Holiness Dalai Lama Temple. As you know, the praying flags, these flags, the idea of this flag is to fly to Kailash. Kailash is a holy mountain for, for religion. Uh, uh, for the Buddhist, uh, uh, for the Bon, it's a pre-Buddhist religion in Tibet, for the Hindu and for Jain religion, okay? Again, around the Dalai Lama temple, and this is the mantra written on the stone, which they leave. So, when the Tibetan pray, they go around, this is again thing for another, for another lecture, they go around the temple, and always this ritual work. You have it in Mecca, you have it in every religion, it's from left to right. You have it in church also, from left, from the position of the priest. So they are walking around the Hadala Lama temple, they can put the uh, praying flags, which can fly to the Kailash. They have a, a praying meal, again with the mantra, so they are touching the praying meal. Uh, and then can, they can leave the mantra on the stone. And this was one of my work. I put one stone, which I call Wittgenstein Mantra. This is a famous, I wrote a famous Wittgenstein idea about existence of God. Does God exist? Is, is he 
doesn't exist. It's, it's not the point. The point is uh, our position. I will not translate you, this to you because I don't know original in German. I don't know original in English. So if I translate it from a Croatian to English, it will be stupid. But uh, it's about the position of God. Why I put this uh, uh, Wittgenstein uh, mantra? Uh, because of idea of the God creator, which doesn't exist in the European culture I'm coming from, because of three big religions like Christianity, Islam, and Judaism are based on the idea of the God creator. So this concept and the concept of God in this monotheistic sense doesn't exist for the Buddhist. So I put this quote of Wittgenstein because it's about the idea of God creator. This was my game for the culture which I, where idea of God doesn't exist. I put my mantra and this was done with the watercolor. So the first ray destroyed. It was not visible anymore. It was covered. So it was just for the certain moment this act. Later was not visible. 2011 when I came first time and after this I start to go to the school and I done my research, okay? Again the work and 